Welcome back, Canonites. Just in time for Christmas, Dark Horse and 343 have gifted us with the 13th issue of Halo Escalation and the start of a true follow-up to Spartan Ops and the Janus Key storyline. While I'm sad to say that not a whole lot happens, the issue itself is overall decent. So without delay, let's dive in. We start our issue with an introduction to the human relationship with Forerunner technology and a brief recap of Halsey's involvement with Infinity leading up to her capture by Jewel Dama. More or less, this bit is just an initiation for the unfamiliar. Remember, this issue is being billed as a jump-in point for new fans, and reminding us of Halsey's state of mind. It is interesting to note that she sees her only goal now is fulfilling the librarian's instruction, though it would appear on the surface that Halsey has defected. Those of us who have spent a whole lot of time investing in the expanded lore know that she rarely works in such simple ways. Jewel is nothing more than a means to an end. And while she may want revenge on those who wronged her, it's extremely unlikely that she wants to wipe out humanity, this being Jewel's ultimate goal. We jump forward to an engagement between the UNSC and Promethean slash Covenant forces on the colony of Oban. Fun fact, this is the setting for the multiplayer map, Daybreak. After saving Thorn from a Promethean knight, Commander Palmer, assured of Jewel's presence on Oban, broadcasts Jewel's image to all UNSC forces in an effort to get the Covenant cultist leader. Another Spartan reports a pair of phantoms having circled back and slipped into a nearby valley, and notes that he marked them for an airstrike. As she and Thorne are surrounded by crawlers, Palmer seems to go absolutely crazy at the possibility of catching or killing Jewel. She makes for a warthog to intercept the phantoms, demanding Thorne take the gun. Of almost no noteworthiness is the fact that Palmer refers to the warthog as a truck. It's really just a minor thing, but I actually caught myself rereading this page for a few minutes the first time around. Just felt kind of out of place. Anyway, for reasons I cannot understand, Palmer makes a run for the Phantoms. Driving like a mad woman, Palmer nearly kills herself and Thorne as they take the Warthog over a cliff, bounce off the top of one of the Phantoms and crash into the valley below. All this, just before the Phantoms are destroyed. Holy hell, I thought that we were done with this dumbass version of Palmer. Escalation so far had given her some decent character development, but now we're back to the stupid ass gung-ho Palmer that embittered many fans to her in the first place. So... We move forward to the debriefing on Infinity, Lasky rightly asking Palmer what the fuck she was thinking. This of course leads us to the real bug up Palmer's ass, Catherine Halsey. And this brings me to my biggest issue with Palmer as a character, her issue with Dr. Halsey. Ever since Spartan Ops, Palmer has made no secret of her extreme dislike of Halsey, and ever since, I have been struggling to understand it. I mean, I get that Halsey is a terrible person in the eyes of many people in-universe, but Palmer's hatred has always come off as very personal. We can see how other characters treat Halsey knowing what she's done. And it's an extreme contrast to Palmer's hatred. Don't worry, Roland. We'll take her off your hands again shortly. And now we're letting the war criminal touch things. I could type for her, if that'd make you feel better. It would help. She installed these engines. No one in the UNSC understands them as well as she does. Hey! What did Halsey do to Palmer? I can't believe it's simply her work with the Spartan 2 program, unless Osman or Perengoski pulled a Kilo 5 and told her a one-sided story with little to no context. So, back to the comic. So after some back and forth, we see, again, that Lasky and Palmer don't really see eye to eye on the Halsey situation. Lasky wanting to bring her in, Palmer wanting to kill her. After the debriefing, Palmer meets up with Dr. Glassman, who is pretty much just being Dr. Glassman. Does anyone else really hate this character? He messes around with one Forerunner artifact only to be teleported and captured by the Covenant? And what does he do with the very next artifact he gets his hands on? Messes around with it. I really just want to see this guy come to some real harm. Maybe force him to take some shit seriously. Anyway, we discover that a science team is being put together to be led by Glassman for some mission that we never receive any information on. Over the course of their conversation, Glassman brings up Halsey once again pissing off Palmer. Seriously, why does she hate Halsey? I'm not saying it isn't completely justified, but as I said before, it's such a harsh contrast to how others treat her. So, as Infinity attempts to jump to some new location, they quickly find themselves forced out of slip space and into an asteroid field. After getting their bearings back, they try to jump again, but to no avail. It seems that something keeps resetting the engine's slipspace coordinates to their current location. Not long after, Roland detects strange energy readings on the nearby planet. With nothing else to do, and Glassman at a loss to explain the problems with the engines, their only hope is to investigate the happenings on the planet. 
Meanwhile, on a Covenant cruiser, it's revealed that Dr. Halsey was essentially able to use an artifact from Requiem to hack into Infinity's Forerunner engines and force them to a specific location. This was in fact the reason for the attack on Oban at the beginning of the issue, draw in Infinity to make the initial connection. According to Halsey, with a little patience the other half of the Janus key will essentially be delivered right into her and Jules' hands. I'm not exactly sure what would prompt Lasky to allow the Janus key fragment to leave Infinity, but I guess we'll find out. So that's issue 13, an okay star to a four issue story arc acting as a direct follow up to Spartan Ops. I would say there's a little too much fluff, but most of my gripes stem from existing issues with certain characters, except for Palmer's suicide run on Oban. That was just stupid ass bullshit. There's no other way to cut it. But to this comic's credit, it is indeed a great jump in point for fans who haven't been keeping up with the comics, and I'm still excited to see where this story is headed. While I doubt much will actually happen, I am still hoping for some sort of revelation or event that might feed into Halo 5's story. Anyway, that's all for now. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, or Happy Upcoming Holidays depending on what you celebrate, and a Happy New Year to all. This has been Halo Canon, and I'll see you in 2015. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means more than I can express in a few minutes of audio. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it around on whatever social media you see fit, and all that jazz. Thank you so much. Your support is everything. I would not be where I am without you. Thanks.